Hey y'all, it's Jess with Roots and Refuge Farm. Today I wanna to talk to you about cast iron. I started with the whole marriage and children thing pretty young in life. So I actually set up my first house when I was 20 years old. I really hadn't gotten the adulting thing down yet and I didn't for a while after that. However, we made a move from Central Arkansas all the way up to East Tennessee and as I signed my first ever lease and set up for my first ever house as an adult. I knew I was gonna need one thing, a cast iron pan. It was the very first thing that I bought for my own home. I actually ordered it as we were moving and it was delivered to the door the day that we moved in. Now I promptly used that pan and put it in the dishwasher. When it turned orange with rust, I stuck it in a cabinet and there it stayed for at least three years. During those three years was the time that I gave birth to my son who had really bad food allergies and I started reading labels for the first time. And in response to that, I learned about real food and I learned that cooking from scratch is the best way to ensure your family's health. Now around that time, I was gifted a cookbook called Mad Hungry, Feeding Men and Boys by Lucinda Scala Quinn. And this was the first cookbook that I really destroyed in learning how to cook. And in this book, the author touts the benefits of cast iron pans. And I was like, hey, I have one of those. So I went and unearthed that orange rusty thing from underneath the cabinets and I gave it a go and I've never looked back since. So today I want to share my love of cast iron with you. For some reason, there seems to be a little bit of mystery that surrounds cast iron. People seem to have a lot of misconceptions about it. They think that it's hard or for some reason that they can't use it. They continue to spend big bucks on cookware that they have to replace every few years. And today I want to convince you that you should be using cast iron pans. Cast iron comes in all kinds of shapes and sizes like the little corn muffin tin that many southern grannies I knew of whenever I was a kid had hanging up in their kitchen. But today I want to talk to you about using cast iron as your everyday cookware. First, we should address the fact that not all cast iron is created equally. Now, if you get anything old from a garage sale or an estate sale, those are my favorite places to find cast iron. I love to find good old cast iron. You can tell whenever it's really uh, well made by how thick walled it is and typically anything that is really old is going to be pretty quality made. But today there are a lot of cast iron pans available on the market that simply are not high quality. Many of them are made in China. They are very thin. They do not conduct heat well. If you are going to purchase brand new cast iron now, my suggestion is hands down to go with Lodge Cookware. It's made in the United States. They have been around for a long time. Their quality is consistent. And though it might cost just a little bit more than other brands of cast iron, you're still talking about very affordable cookware. All of my cast iron is either from estate sales. I've found some really cool deals um, like finding pans for a quarter or a dollar at a garage sale and they're orange and covered with rust. I love finding old cast iron and bringing it back to life. Or if any of my pans were purchased new, they are all Lodge cookware, except for the enameled cast iron, but I'll get to that later. Here are my four most used cast iron pans, a six inch skillet, which is our favorite egg pan, a 10 inch skillet, which we use for making Dutch baby pancakes, sauteing all sorts of stuff, braising meats, cooking cornbread, a 12 inch skillet, which we use the same thing. Honestly, we usually cook with both of them because we have such a big family. And then down on the end is a 14 inch skillet. For those times that we're cooking massive family size amounts or one of my absolute favorite chicken recipes is a spatchcock chicken that you lay open and bake in that pan. The first thing you should know about cast iron is that it is incredibly affordable. This pan, which is the very same pan that I bought whenever I was settling into my first home, costs you $14.98 on Amazon. 15 bucks for a pan that I am not joking, you will be able to hand down to your children and your grandchildren. A really good 
quality set of Teflon covered cookware is gonna cost you a few hundred dollars at least. But for all of these pans that are sitting here on my table, which are truly the backbone of my cookware, it's less than a hundred bucks. And like I said, I bought this over a decade ago and have used it hundreds and hundreds of time and it's only gotten better with time. You can also often find cast iron used at garage sales and estate sales and flea markets. Now, it's gotten a little more popular to use it in recent years and so the prices in those places have gone up. But occasionally you can come across a garage sale and find a pan just like this one, which I paid a quarter for, but a lot of times they're in pretty rough shape. Don't just leave it behind because it's covered in rust. Cast iron pans can survive a whole lot of damage and a whole lot of neglect. Now you might have to sand them down and do some work, but you can bring it back to life and get a great pan for a really good deal. And the benefit of buying used cast iron and bringing it back to life is that then it has a story. And I don't know about you, but I love things with a story. Now the next benefit, which is like I said, you can't ruin it. Truly, the worst you can damage cast iron is to improperly care for it and ruin its seasoning. But the pan itself is fine. You can always re-season it. Now they are tough as nails, which means if you drop it on your glass top stove or ceramic tile or foot, the other half of that equation is gonna bear the brunt of that damage. The cast iron pan, however, will be just fine. I've heard stories of people digging through the rubbish of house fires and tornadoes and finding their cast iron pans. These things are really, really hard to damage. Which, in a household like mine, where often I have a lot of guests over, where I have kids that are learning to cook, that is a huge plus. I've seen a lot of nonstick pans bite the dust in my kitchen because somebody scrambled eggs with a fork in them. The forgiveness of cast iron is something that has saved me a lot of money and a lot of frustration over the years. This is truly heritage cookware. When you buy it, if you use it and love it, it is something that will be a treasure to your children someday. If you invest in a set of good cast iron, you could quite literally never have to buy pans again in your life. Next, it is so much easier than you think. Now I know because I was one of those people that the first time my cast iron pan got rusty, I stuck it in the shelf and did not use it for years. However, if you learn how to properly care for it, it can actually be even more simple than any other cookware. Cast iron pans have what's called seasoning, which that's where the pan takes on this really slick coating which is what makes it non-stick. Now, if you buy a new pan, it's going to say on it pre-seasoned, um, but that's baloney. <laughs> Whatever they put on it, I, I don't even know what it is. It's not really non-stick. It's not really the seasoning that you're looking for in cast iron. So when you get your new pan, you want to get some soapy hot water and just scrub the tar out of it, then rub it down with some vegetable oil or a shortening, and then bake it in a 325 degree oven for a couple of hours. After that, the first few times you use it, cook something good and fatty in it. Brown some hamburger meat or cook up some sausage. Um, just something that's good and fatty that will help bring that sealing to the pan. And whenever it comes to washing it, all you do is run hot water in it, scrub it with a good piece of steel wool that doesn't have soap in it, and then when it's done, take a paper towel with a little bit of oil and wipe it down. To dry your pan, my favorite way to do it is just put it on the stove burner, turn the eye on, and let the heat seal it and dry it, turn it off. I like to store my pans hanging up, but you can put it in the cabinet if you want to. Now the more you cook with it, the more seasons it gets. It is actually a common misconception that you can't use soap on cast iron. You don't need to um, because it's iron so it doesn't harbor bacteria. And if you do use soaps, especially like palm olives that are gonna cut a lot of grease, they can mess with your seasoning if you leave your pan to dry without re-oiling it. If somehow soap gets on your pan, it's probably not that big of a deal. You wanna just make sure you wipe it down with some oil and set it out on the counter so it can soak that oil in and protect the seasoning. The idea that cast iron has to be some really high maintenance fussy thing, I don't even know where that 
that came from because sincerely it is one of the easiest cookwares to own and use. Another perk to cast iron is that it is significantly healthier for you than chemical laden nonstick varieties. If you've ever done any research at all about Teflon, you probably know that that's not really something that you want to be using in your kitchen. But cast iron when seasoned properly and taken care of can be super nonstick. We fry eggs in ours, scramble eggs in ours, um, cooked fried potatoes, those titchy things that tend to stick really easily. They do fine in well-seasoned cast iron. Because it has the potential to be so nonstick, you can use less oil and in that cook your food in a manner that is healthier for you, both by avoiding the chemicals of nonstick cookware and by avoiding excess oils that are sometimes required to keep food from sticking in cookware that isn't coated with a non-stick substance. Not to mention the fact that cooking in cast iron cookware actually supplements your iron intake in your body. As someone who has dealt with being borderline anemic in my life, that can really be a struggle, um, causing a lot of fatigue and issues from low iron in the blood. Cast iron cookware adds a pretty significant amount of iron into your food and can help with things like anemia. Cast iron is reactive, um, so if you are cooking things like tomatoes and um, sometimes people say don't cook that in cast iron because of the high acids and the pan being reactive I've never ever done anything differently as far as cooking in cast iron and anything else I have read that if your pan is not well seasoned that you can end up with a kind of metallic taste in your food I have a very very sensitive palate and sense of smell I can taste just about anything that is in food and I have never ever once in any experience of cooking with cast iron for the last 10 years ever felt like my food tasted metallic no matter what it was that I cooked so I figured I would throw that in there because that is something I have read repetitively in different places but that is not something I have ever experienced lastly one major reason to use cast iron is because it is so incredibly versatile you can use it for all sorts of stuff these four pans would probably be the very top of my list along with my enameled cast iron Dutch ovens when it comes to my must-have kitchen tools. I can use these four pans to cook any number of meals. You can use them for baking. You can make bread in cast iron. Um, obviously, I've mentioned cornbread. You can braise meats. You can slow cook meats. You can, I mean, I just, I can't even tell you how many ways. You can make casseroles, one dish, meals, sauces, not to mention the fact that you can take it camping with you. You can cook with it on a campfire. You can put it on the grill. I'm telling you, there, the versatility here is unmatched by any other kitchen tool. I would also go on to say that cast iron is easier to cook in. Iron is not known for conducting heat evenly. However, it is known for retaining heat and for not heating up really fast. Now, I don't know about you, but it is probably one of the biggest pet peeves in the kitchen for me to have to deal with equipment that isn't working right. Like whenever you know you're a good cook and you don't burn food, but your pan has a hot spot and you flip over a piece of meat to see one really charred part and then the other half not cooked. That doesn't happen in cast iron because even though iron doesn't necessarily heat evenly, the cast iron pans retain heat and move it around in such a way that stuff does cook evenly. We used to live in a house with an amazing gas stove. It was so nice and I was so spoiled. And then we moved out to our foreclosure in the country and my farm dream came true but our appliances sucked and we've spent the last four years building our farm instead of replacing our appliances. So now I have a bottom of the line stove with the cruddy coil electric top and honestly the thing is a nightmare when it comes to cooking. But with my cast iron pans because they do distribute heat so evenly I'm actually able to cook on that stove without totally pulling my hair out. Enameled cast iron is just cast iron that has been coated with enamel like this Dutch oven. Now this is a seven quart Dutch oven. It's got a little bit of staining down in it because it's been used a lot. Now, the industry standard top of the line Dutch oven is a Le Creuset, which I don't have because I've never been able to afford one. They're a few hundred dollars each. And from everything I've read, they are absolutely amazing and will literally last forever. Now, 
the Dutch ovens that I have, and I have three of them because I use them for everything and often cook for 20 plus people with our huge extended family. They came from Sam's Club. They're a brand, I believe it's called Tramontina, but um, Lodge makes a really good one. That's what several of my friends have. They are used just like regular cast iron, except for you do wash these out with um, soap because of the enamel they don't have the antimicrobial properties that iron does but as far as even heating and um, heat retention and just being all over pretty undestructible they hold a lot of the same properties as regular non-coated cast iron does okay friends so that is my case for cast iron. I hope this helps you, and I really hope that you will give cast iron cookware a try. I will put links below to um, the Lodge cast iron pans like that that I use, and a Lodge Dutch oven, which is very similar to the one that I use. Or if you do have a Sam's club membership you could go check that out they get them in the winter um, and they do go on sale usually at the end of the season if you love cast iron and you love using it for some reason that i didn't mention here today make sure you throw it down in the comments below because that could definitely help somebody and i am looking forward to sharing with you guys more about how i cook with my cast iron and the recipes that i enjoy using with it thank you guys so much for watching i bless you until next time